How's it going everyone? Welcome to Asian Filmists. My name is Ray and I love movies. And the movie we'll be talking about today is a 2017 anime film, Fireworks. Should we see it from the side or the bottom? This movie was directed by Takeuchi Nobuyuki and it's actually a remake of a made-for-TV movie of the same name by director Iwai Shunji, who is a director whose work I really enjoy. And on top of that, the screenplay was written by One Hitoshi, the guy who directed the live-action Bakuman, which was one of my favorite movies of 2015. And leading the voice cast are two actors whom I really enjoy watching on screen. There's Suda Masaki and Hirose Suzu. Now for the story of Fireworks, I thought it was really interesting in the sense that if you've seen any of the trailers, it doesn't, the trailers don't really do a good job of really telling you everything what the story was about. You know, honestly, I haven't seen the original uh, movie that this anime is a remake of, but those of you who've seen the original movie might have an idea uh, what the story of this anime is about. I'm not sure how much has changed to be honest, but I will tell you there's a lot more to the story than what the trailers lead you to believe. Now as a common practice of when I talk about the movies, I try to not tell more than what the trailers actually reveal. So I'll do my best when talking about this story without spoiling too much. Sorry in advance. The story focuses on two high school students. There's Nazuna who's played by Hirose Suzu and there's Norimichi who's played by Suda Masaki. And the story the movie takes place over the course of one day and it's a day of this large fireworks festival that takes place in this rural town which our main characters live in. This is the last fireworks festival that Naza will get to enjoy as she's moving soon due to her mom getting remarried and so she decides on this day that she's going to run away and so she packs up her things, puts on her yukata so she can go to the festival or at least pretend to her parents that she's going to the festival and then convinces Norimichi to come along with her. This is of course against the will of her mom and new dad and this is going against the wishes of Norimichi's friends. Uh, he promises boys that he was going to meet up with them so they can watch the fireworks together as is as there's this long debate that the group of friends are having uh, whether fireworks are round or they're flat. It's, it's kind of a it's a debate which they have which may seem like nothing at first but it's the main reason the boys decide to meet and go journey to where the fireworks are being shot in the sky. Now this is a basic story and it's the kind of story that the trailer leads you to thinking was going to happen but what may go unnoticed are just little words that get dropped here and there through the dialogue spoken in the trailer and they all relate to the idea of what if or if I could redo this again and if you were to look at the movie posters it kind of hints it's uh, the posters say in the text uh, a summer day that repeats and without giving too much away because I have a really bad habit of doing that the story kind of plays with the idea of what if what if you can go back and redo some of the choices you know what would be different and where what choices would you make and you know, I'll leave it like that. So I'll leave the rest for you guys to discover for yourself what my words mean. And that being said, let's talk about what I like about fireworks. First of all, as expected, the voice work is amazing. As expected from two of the biggest young stars in the movie scene today. I mean, I think Suda Masaki is like at the top of his game. He's like so huge right now. And so is Hirose Suzu. Both of them have been in some amazing films in these past few years. And it's nice to see that they can add such a great film like fireworks to their filmography. I also enjoyed the artwork, some of the way the backgrounds were illustrated, it was really breathtaking and really vivid. And of course, the music. I really enjoyed the soundtrack of Fireworks. If you've ever seen any movies directed by Iwai Shinji, you might uh, come to love the music, the music selections he puts into his movies. They're usually like pretty cool piano pieces or orchestra music, but mostly the piano pieces. I really enjoy the piano pieces that he selects to be in his movies. And even though this movie wasn't directed by Iwai Shinji, you can still feel the same sense of music taste uh, as with the soundtrack in Fireworks. And even the songs selected to be the theme songs of this movie, I have had them on repeat for a while uh, on the train ride back after watching this movie in the movie theaters. But the thing I appreciate the most about this movie is how well it pulls the rug straight out from under you. At first I thought it was going to be a story about this young boy and girl appreciating that they're appreciating their last day together, you know, making the most memories you can out of this one day. But then it just kind of throws you into a loop. And the way the movie transitioned into this phase, it was really trippy. It's like, whoa, 
what happened to the movie? This is nothing like the movie I was expecting to see. And as you go further into the story, some parts of the artwork become really trippy. Like there's a part where the characters were enjoying the fireworks being shot in the sky, but instead of looking like regular fireworks, they look like splatters of light and flower patterns. And instead of having the sounds of explosions, it sounded like metal music instruments. It was kind of trippy, but then the way everyone was was kind of interacting with his experience, they didn't really think anything of it and just made it even more just kind of trippy. There was another part in the story where everyone except the main characters were animated in some kind of like a storybook or sketchbook style. And at first I thought it would take you out of the story a little bit, but the way it kind of, uh, the way they brought it in, the kind of situation that set up this transition, it was pretty neat. And I thought the characters were really likable. And a lot of that is thanks to the great voice work provided by the actors. You know, granted, the characters I thought were pretty conventional. I thought, if anything, the most conventional part of this movie were the characters, like their archetypes. However, you just couldn't help but like them. I mean, they're really likable characters, you know. And as for the bad, the negatives, I don't have too much to say, I think. Um, if anything, I thought sometimes uh, the quality of animation kind of shifted from time to time. For the majority of the time, you get feature length quality animation. It's really top notch. And then it kind of shifts and then suddenly you just have TV anime quality art. But the thing that bugged me the most about the animation quality is that they try to mix CG animation with hand drawn. Well not just CG animation, they try to mix cell shaded animation. It would transition from hand drawn to cell shaded and when it was cell shaded you can tell right away that it was cell shaded and it just wasn't really good cell shading. They mainly use cell shading to kind of uh, portray the characters riding bicycles or riding trains and they just kind of look stiff like they're they just look like models uh, just in the background, the mouths weren't moving, and it, overall it just felt really weird because when you shift back to the hand drawn, they're full of life, they have expressions, but then you go into the cell shading, they just look kind of like paper dolls, just kind of standing there, and it kind of three, it kind of takes you out of the movie for a little bit. Another thing, I'm still kind of on the fence with marking up as a negative or even a positive is that I thought at times the movie was a little bit too whimsical. Uh, I mean, if you watch any Iwai Shinji movie, you kind of expect that kind. Of of feeling that kind of storytelling from his work uh, you know for me it works sometimes for this one like there are times when it really worked uh, there are times when I felt like it was just too unbelievable but then you know you just kind of have to accept it to really enjoy this movie and you know and upon doing that I really appreciated the really whimsical nature of the story but you know overall fireworks I thought it was a wonderful movie it's definitely uh, a must-see in the movie theaters if you have the chance I'm pretty sure it's not gonna garner the same level of of hype and the same level of acclaim as your name last year. However, this is still a really good experience on its own and it's a good romantic story to be seen in anime form. And like I said, it really pulled the rug straight from under me. I thought it was going to be a conventional uh, young love anime story, a little, maybe a little bit of slice of life considering that Iwai Shunji was the one who created the original source material, but it really turned fantastical and trippy and I really enjoyed the way everything tied up at the end. And the ending, it was a bit open-ended. You can kind of interpret uh, what happened after all the events on your own. They don't explicitly say what happened, which I think added to the fantastical elements of the story. And if you can get past the shoddy cell shading, you will enjoy the artwork that this movie features as well as a relaxing and beautiful soundtrack. I really enjoy the soundtrack. Even the song that they feature in the trailer, that's the main theme song that plays during the end credits. And I really enjoy it. I mean, if you have the chance, go on YouTube, look up Uchiyage, Hanabi sung by Daoko and Yonezu Kenshi. It's a pretty relaxing song and I really like Yonezu Kenshi's music. He also sung the theme song to Nani Mono which I thought was pretty cool too. So I definitely recommend checking out that song on YouTube. You can watch it. But lastly, do I recommend this movie? Heck yes. I definitely recommend if you're an anime fan, if you're a fan of Iwai Shinji, if you love whimsical storytelling, if you love movies with beautiful music, this movie has it all. Granted, you gotta get past the shoddy cell shading, but other than that, 
really enjoy it, really recommend it. And I guarantee you, after watching this movie, you will want to go to a local festival and check out a fireworks show yourself. It really just gets you into the mood of a summer festival, you know, it's really fun. And so yes, those are my thoughts on fireworks. Should we watch it from the side or from the bottom? What did you guys think? And what kinds of questions do you guys have? Let us know in the comments below. And you can catch me on Twitter at Raymaru555 if you want to chat about movies. And as always everyone, thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you watch, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you can join more discussions about Asian films. So take it easy guys, see you next time.